Glimmer fired a barrage of blinding and burning lights at Shi, making everyone close their eyes. Still firing, Glimmer flew with her combat sent straight at Shi. Shi had her eyes closed and did nothing as her skin scorched. Glimmer accelerated at Shi. Shi, eyes still closed, jumped up and at Glimmer. Glimmer felt herself pulled at Shi as both of them accelerated towards each other. Glimmer readied her best punch. When only 10 feet apart, Shi extended one hand forward at Glimmer's face. Her repulsion power then exploded at Glimmer. Glimmer was knocked back in the air but did not fall. Her nose was bleeding badly. Glimmer didn't have time to recover from the hit. She was on the ground firing one repulsion hit after another at Glimmer who was getting hammered at a distance and knew she had to get close quick. Glimmer flew close and sat down on the ground next to She. She was still hitting her fast and hard, her arms moving back and forth like a boxer with palms wide open. Glimmer tried to get closer to her and She backed up and to the side, always keeping her focus on Glimmer. Glimmer was bleeding from more than one place on her head and didn't know if she could keep this up. Glimmer flashed She in a hot light that burned her skin and set her hair on fire. She quickly used her power to repulse the flames and snuff out anything burning on her head. Glimmer used the distraction to kick She in her ribs. She flew sideways and landed on her feet. She turned invisible. So did Glimmer. She has two cracked ribs. Why isn't she red benched? Midas asked, looking at the monitors. Her pain tolerance says she can still fight, Lucy said. Be quiet and watch. Midas watched both of the girls' bio readings. Each girl could heal in a minute what a normal person could heal in a day. After the whole 15 minutes passes, Coach Spurs addressed the girls. No more invisibility. Keep the match going. Both girls reappeared on opposite sides of the pit, both looking significantly better after what was to them half a month of healing. They started walking toward each other a little more cautiously this time. She struck first, with both hands extended. She extended her power out and struck the other girl in her lower legs. With Glimmer finding her footing, she started her attacks again. Glimmer tried to close the distance, but again couldn't. She kept pounding her with raw force from a distance. Both girls were using their combat senses, but they matched each other so well it only served to keep them even. Glimmer then tried a seemingly desperate attempt to get She. Glimmer flew fast and low like she was going to tackle She. She jumped over her and used her repelling power to drive Glimmer's head down into the dirt floor of the pit. Glimmer turned and hit the back of her head just in time to see She above her in the air. It was what Glimmer wanted. A fast flyer like Glimmer was able to move much faster than gravity. She hung in the air vulnerable. She realized her mistake and started to use her power to pull her back to the ground. Glimmer was already on her and grabbed her by an ankle. Glimmer flew fast for one of the walls and swung She like a rag doll at it. She used her power to repel the wall and lessen the damage. But Glimmer was not tiring from swinging her. She tried to fire her power at her each time Glimmer wound up for another hit. Glimmer and She were both a mess when Glimmer finally dropped She. She hit the ground with a thud and Glimmer fell on her knees next to her. Both girls stood up and started trading blows. Nothing fancy. She started making distance again so Glimmer was too far away to strike. But she could hit just fine. Glimmer flew standing upright into She and toward the nearest wall. When they struck the rocks embedded in the wall, most of the force went into She. Glimmer then pinned She with both hands by her throat. Glimmer braced for hits with both feet planted and her flying power pushing her forward. The pressure on She's throat was incredible. The young combatant couldn't breathe. She didn't have enough left to fend off the much stronger girl, but made her mind up to fight no matter what. She put both of her hands against Glimmer's face and pushed. Glimmer couldn't breathe either and her neck felt like it was going to break backwards. The pain in her neck made Glimmer duck under the force pushing on her face. She then drove a shoulder into She and quickly found her grip on She's throat. She focused her power out of each hand into a concentrated point. She used this focus point to cut Glimmer up and down each side of her torso. Glimmer screamed as she bled and used the pain to fuel her grip. She felt herself about to pass out. She put her hands past Glimmer's head and pulled the largest object her power could grab. Suddenly, a stone the size of a small car came loose from the opposite wall and was accelerating at the two girls. Glimmer's eyes widened as she sensed what was coming and tried to move from her entrenched stance. She moved her hands back to Glimmer's hands and held them to her throat. She used her powers to lock Glimmer to her. The two girls made eye contact just as the stone smashed into the side of the pit like a meteor, right where the two girls had been fighting. Both girls walked out of the red bench part of the dugout and back to the pit. 
Applause erupted from the stands, and the other students screamed their names. Even Coach Spurs clapped as they walked up. Both girls still had blood on their faces and were holding their sides. Coach Spurs looked past them at Coach Hansen. They refused medical treatment, Coach Hansen said with raised eyebrows. I want to go again, right now, Glimmer said. Now's fine with me, she said. You had nothing left, I had you. You hit the bench first, blondie. Coach Spurs stepped between the two girls. Match is a draw, take your seats, Coach Spurs said in a tone that was not meant to be questioned. Hitters, front and center. She went to the stands and sat next to Bioforce. Bioforce placed a hand on her shoulder. I think you won that match. She felt all her aches and pains disappear. She felt fresh, like she had just woken up. She looked at Bioforce, who must have healed her when they touched. Thank you. I'm just trying to get used to the role of team healer, she said with a smile. I think they were trying to really hurt each other, might have said to Lucy in shock. First off, they can't really hurt each other because of the harnesses. And secondly, I'd like to say it's just the spirit of competition, but that was the best stealth fight I've ever seen, Lucy said as she spun in her chair looking at the ceiling. It was? I wouldn't want either of those two girls mad at me, might have said as he prepped for the hitters to start. Coach Spurs looked at his clipboard and called the first two hitters up. Olympian and Kinetic, you're both in the pit. Olympian smiled at Kinetic and said, good luck. Onlookers were waiting for a smirk or some type of backhanded comment. It never came. Olympian was genuine. In the pit, both young hitters waited for the horn. Kinetic knew how strong and tough Olympian was. He tried to get a game plan in his head. Olympian knew how fast Kinetic was on his test. He would have to figure out a way to get a hold of him. Olympian wished this was just a wrestling match and he wouldn't have to chase someone three times his speed. At the horn, both boys flew straight at each other. Kinetic and Olympian crashed in the center of the pit. The sound from the hit was like an explosion that made everyone in the stands flinch. Olympian hovered in the air like nothing happened. Did I get him? He didn't. Kinetic's force field had protected him. Kinetic flew by at high speed and struck Olympian in the head. Olympian simply looked at where he was and how fast he was moving. On the next pass, Olympian tried to grapple Kinetic around the waist. Kinetic's force field made it too difficult to get his arms around him. Kinetic felt better knowing that Olympian couldn't hang on to him. He pressed the advantage and started hitting Olympian more. Olympian kept trying to grab onto Kinetic. Then Olympian changed tactics and swung hard at Kinetic. Olympian connected and knocked Kinetic into the side of the pit. Kinetic's force field usually protected him from everything, but the force of the blow was so great that it sent a shockwave into Kinetic that really hurt. Kinetic then started evading Olympian. Olympian knew he hurt Kinetic by his expression and the way his tactics changed. Olympian tried again and again to get close to Kinetic. He was just too quick. Olympian then remembered something his older brother once told him about taking the field and owning the terrain. Olympian ignored Kinetic and his speed-based attacks. He grabbed a large rock from the side wall and tossed it into the air. As it came down, he slapped it like a volleyball player serving stone shrapnel at Kinetic. Olympian did this again and again. Even though his force field protected him thoroughly, Kinetic kept getting pelted with stone pieces. What he noticed was all the dust from the crushed rocks and how difficult it was to see. Olympian then flew low and in a circle around the outside of the pit. Faster and faster he flew, and the dust kept getting worse. Soon, Kinetic didn't know where Olympian was in the swirl below. Kinetic was turning left and right, looking for Olympian. Then, faster than most could see, Olympian came up from behind him, and with two raised fists like hammers, he knocked him straight down. The strike made the same explosive noise as earlier. Olympian flew straight down after him. In the pit, in the dust, the explosion could be heard again and again. Finally, Kinetic was in the red bench room. He walked out quickly, and when Coach Spurs looked at him, he responded. I'm fine, he knocked down my force field, and then I was benched on the next hit. Olympian was just coming out of the pit and landed next to Kinetic and Coach Spurs. Good match, you made it very difficult to catch you, Olympian said and extended his hand to shake. Kinetic didn't like losing, but took the compliment anyway. Thanks, you did great. I didn't see the dust thing coming, Kinetic said and shook his hand. He seems awful well-mannered, but... I don't think I want him mad at me either, Midas said. Lucy laughed out loud. No, me neither. I need the student with the gravity powers, the matter transmuter, and Olympian to stay. Matches will continue in about 30 minutes. After we fix the pit, Coach Spurs said. Midas looked at Lucy as if to ask her if Coach Spurs meant him. Go, you're the only matter transmuter here, Lucy said.